So what are we up to today? Why are we drilling holes in stainless steel plate? And wait, wait, what is that? Why in the world does your she shed look like that? All will be answered in good time, but first things first. Hi, I'm Scott. And I'm Holly. And this is The Space Between. I'm on vacation every single day because I love my occupation. You made my future bright, so thankful for everything. Rejuvenating my inner light as I work hard for all I need. Open arms, embracing life, and all the weight you gave to me. I work, it pays off. I'm happy now, it's paying me. Do the shit and love it on a daily. Say you hate your job, but you'll never leave. Never leave, but that ain't gonna be me. That ain't gonna be me. Well, I'm drilling holes in stainless steel plate and then deburring them because I'm building a housing for a new lithium ion battery made from the leaf cells. And my shop looks like this because, well, I burned down my she shed. And yes, I did it playing with lithium ion batteries. How did we go from here to here? I'll try to explain it real quickly by borrowing an animation from a buddy of mine, Jehu, out in California. You can see his link below. These batteries that we take out of cars, we have to stack the cells together to get to the voltage that we need to do the job that we want to do. A lithium ion battery has a high charge, and if you go over it, you can damage it. And it has a low charge, that if you go under it, you can damage it. So if you stacked a bunch of cells together and one of the cells has a lower charge than the other two cells, if you start to drain it down, that middle cell is going to get damaged because it's going to drop below the other two cells before they get to their low and the unit shuts off. And the opposite is true for when charging. Now the outer two cells are going to get damaged because they're going to go over voltage before the center cell gets charged. So it is very critical that you get all these cells balanced to the exact same or within 0.01 of a volt of each other so not to damage any of the other cells that are in the pack. So when you get a pack, usually you're going to have cell differential. And cell differential is when, obviously, one or two or more of the cells are all at a different voltage. So what I was doing was individually charging each cell in the pack or top balancing. So what I was doing was bringing each cell up individually using a, cell, a single cell charger and unfortunately it didn't have an automatic shutoff and when the cells hit when the cell hit its top it started off gassing and then it caught on fire well when one cell catches on fire you're pretty sure the next cell and the next cell and the next cell are going to go as you can clearly see here, we burned through 12 cells before we got this put out. There were three more volt batteries sitting next to this one. So every time the next cell went off, I hit it with another fire extinguisher. 16 fire extinguishers in 16 minutes before the fire department showed up. And luckily they did, because this guy went in, in his suit, picked up the other three batteries, brought them out, and then went in and took the one that was on fire and brought it out. And while they did manage to save the house and my marriage, but unfortunately, I still burned down my she shed. So now you know why I'm working outside with no shop. But back to our story. The one thing I like about the Leafs is they're modular. You can stack the packs together in parallel to get more amp hours, or you can put them in series to get higher voltage. And when you've got all your packs together, I put these two ends that I manufactured on, ran the stainless steel rods through all four corners, compressed the packs together, and then added these lifting rings so that, well, so you could move them. Now this particular pack I was building in the 12 volt series for a brand new 2019 Leopard 42, which he ordered with the Bear Basics. We built it a cover, top charged all the cells, and added our battery management system. But each one of these BMSs controls two cells at a time, which is taking us right up to 16 volts, about 15.8 volts. And they control the charging as well as the discharging. And they 
will shut down if any over or under voltage uh, occurs as well. So basically we started our negative and we're going to work our way down like I've done on all the rest of them here. So what I do is I'm taking and I do one wire and then I heat shrink it. And before any of you start blowing up about uh, getting shocked or getting at 12 volts, these are not going to bite you. At 48 volts, they could have a uh, awakening effect. Basically, I take each individual lead, which is monitoring each 3.7 volt cell. So we've got 3.7 across here and 3.7 across here. Now I can't separate those because they're conjoined here. Um, so that's how we end up with a little bit more than 12 volts. We end up with 16 volts because we've got seven, right around 7.2 to 7.6 across this one pack, which will give us 14 to 16 on the way out. What we're doing is we're taking each one of these lines monitors one cell. Now there's four packs in each one of these and the pack, we've got two in series and two in parallel. And each one of the packs is about 333 uh, amp hours. So that gives me a total of 66 between oof, between these, between the two. So each pack has 66. So I'm getting 120 out of the two. And I didn't get shocked. That's hot. If I was working with this in 48 volts, like I do with the volt batteries, or like the one I'm going to build shortly um, for a experiment, we're going to run a larger system on the boat. which would basically take us from 18 kW, which is what we're kilowatt hours, which is what we're running on the boat now. And we're gonna go ahead and bump that up to 28 kilowatt hours. So basically we're gonna take this setup, turn it into 48 volts, which we would start with a positive here, we'll jump here. We would put another bus bar across here, leave that one there, bus bar across here, leave that one there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven packs, and we're at 48 volts. Now, in this configuration, we're running, um, we've got one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That would leave us with one, two, three, four, five. So we will add two more, so our pack will be about this much wider but we will have two 48 volt batteries in each pack. And like I said, that's gonna take us to right at 28 kilowatt hours, uh, which will give us an extra 10, and it will be almost in the same amount of space as what the volts are taking up now. Whether they're gonna be better than the volts or whether they're gonna be worse than it. There's only one way to find out. Now, when I'm hooking these up, I can hook each individual wire up because the, um, the BMS is not energized yet. So my last wire to hook up will be my ground, which will energize the BMS. Now, these BMSs are just simple BMSs, but if they're hooked up backwards, they'll start to heat up a little bit and you'll get some residual heat across them. Um, and that's how, you know, hey, you did something wrong. So far, I've only had that happen one time. But, and as you see up here, I'm just taking the pigtails. You've got pin one, pin two. You've got pin one, pin two, pin three, pin four, and pin five. Pin five ends up on your positive of your outgoing 12 volt or 16 volt. So as you can see, I've had to do this this many times, times four batteries. So there's quite a bit more um, labor. labor involved in building a leaf battery.
and I will not build another one for what I built these for because I make a lot more money going to work than this but I did get to come up with a new way to build them um, and I have a machine shop that I have had make these brackets for me This is going to be our positive, this will be our outgoing line, as well as our last tie-in. So basically, I just measure the wires by sight, cut them off, and tie them together. You have to be very careful to make sure that both wires are in because if just one wire is off on a BMS, the BMS won't function. Now the way we test that and when we're done is we will put a test lead across each BMS individually up on the fuse bar to ground and if we don't get our residual voltage then we know we did something wrong. just because now we're going to be working with the grounds and if a ground gets loose and heads over here it could do some damage if it fired on this side because if it hit on this side it would just blow the fuse no, that's, that's the only way it can go there's three holes on one side and one on the other it comes into each individual block and then we have a fuse for each individual BMS six of them down like I said we will clean this up later I'm just showing for practical purposes and then the lid that we made which will get cleaned up a little bit will go right over the top voila voila handles can I show this these are the handles so we can carry it we can either run a strap from here to here here to here or here to here each one of these hooks is capable of Pounds. And this battery weighs right at a hundred and two pounds. Yeah, I'm gonna show that because we got a bunch. Of course, there is no time like a day, two days before a charter to completely redo your battery system again. power yeah go ahead and just the connect the shore power let's see if it works why isn't it
Sure one just lit up. Good deal. That means the inverter's running. Okay. What does this say up here? It says notifications. Low power. Negative 29 watts. 57.2 volt. Zero. Why was the inverter say low power? The rest of the system should start coming online slowly, surely. Did the PV just come on? Negative. Yes, yes it did. 982 watts of solar power, 994, 1006. Just climbing. Good deal. Well, okay. look at that. You were worried for nothing. All back up and run. Okay, so yes, I burned down my she shed. And I know I'm gonna get a lot of questions on it and what happened to the batteries and that's all okay, but I guess the main question would be is why I hadn't said anything any sooner because I guess I was madder at myself than anything for letting it happen. It was a silly mistake, but we all make mistakes, I guess. Um, so that was last Christmas day that the battery went up. Uh, and as you can see, the shed's been demoed and the new footers have been put in for the she shear she shed, which should be in by the end of the year. As far as the batteries go though, um, I switched out the volts to the Leafs about a year ago, um, actually about 11 months ago. Um, the volts ran well, I had no issues with them but I wanted to try something new. I wanted to see if I could get a little bit more kilowatt hours out of the same space. And I did just that. The uh, Leaf batteries um, are 28 kilowatt hours where the volts were only 18 kilowatt hours. I can now run two AC units for overnight, uh, up to eight hours before the generator comes on. Um, the Leafs, uh, I think the thing I like the most about the Leafs is the fact that they're modular. So I can build a 12 volt system or I can build a 60 volt system like I have. Uh, my voltage range on the Leafs is from 42 volts all the way up to uh, 58 volts. So I've got quite a bit of swing there using the larger, uh, you know, uh, using the higher voltage. Running battery management systems now um, with automatic shutoffs and plus I've got the, you know, automatic shutoff on the, uh, on the inverter as well. So it's got two, uh, safety redundancies on that system. We've been out of circulation for a little bit, but we've been down in the Keys for the last month. So stay tuned for the Fantasy Fest 2019 stuff that's coming up. And we're gonna be doing some more um, evaluations on stuff that we've put on the boat and how, how it's worked out, like the sea deck and uh, uh, you know the anchor, you know, so on and so forth. So stay tuned. And don't forget to smash that subscribe button.